I'm Harry Godber. I manage the New South Wales Youth Orchestra. And joining me here in the Fine Music FM studios is internationally renowned virtuoso pianist David Fung. David, welcome. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. David is in Sydney at the moment to help us launch the New South Wales Youth Orchestra. He's playing Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto with the orchestra in our inaugural concert. That's at 7pm on Saturday, November the 28th in the Verbruggen Hall. I think it's fair to say that you're one of Australia's most brilliant musical exports. What are some of the personal highlights for you of your touring career so far? Um... Um, I mean, I've played with some really wonderful ensembles and great musicians around the world, including um, some of the most wonderful orchestras here in the country. And um, I can really say that um, our best orchestras certainly uh, shine very strongly internationally as well. One of the things that fascinates me most about your story is the way that you came to learn the piano. Tell us a bit about that journey. Um, so, I mean, uh, um, like a lot of um, Asian children, we grew up studying piano and violin, and it was really a lot of fun. I mean, it was, I think, um, very much a part of, um, I think, um, the culture we had as youths uh, in Australia, sort of playing in all the music groups and um, and just sort of um, enjoying music. Uh, but um, it was never really something intended uh, for my career, per se. I think my parents had... Um, their eye on me studying medical school. <laughs> um, you actually did do medical school. You, you, you graduated from James Roofs with a, a maximum tertiary admissions rank uh, and then <laughs> went to study medicine. Tell me right. about, that, about that choice. Um, you know, it was... Um, I, I did love um, the, uh, the idea of being a doctor at the time. I don't believe... Um, I don't think there are, uh, there are a few people at 18 who know exactly what they want to be doing um, for the rest of their lives. And, I, you know, I do believe that um, as you um, go through different s- sort of cycles in your life, you have different um, preferences and interests. But for me, I um, really felt that another side of me was this artistic side, which wasn't being fulfilled. And I think... Uh, that came to the fore in the first year of uh, medical school, where I, uh, when I very miraculously won uh, a, a big competition in Australia, and it was able to sort of launch my um, kind of career abroad and 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 put me in in good schools as well um, to to sort of commence my formal training per se. It's a very interesting issue. And it's one that that definitely confronts a lot of our players. Um, you know, the the issue of whether to turn our passion for music into a career. Having left the path to medicine, which you obviously had worked very hard to to get onto, did you ever have any conflicting thoughts about the choice that you made to pursue music? Um, I think um, this is such a cliche, but um, you don't choose music. Music chooses you. Uh, And it's something that I think every musician, professional musician, has felt in, in their lives. And I think for me... Um, it was absolutely inevitable. I, I, I do have certain regrets of um, not having a very typical life. I think, you know, being a musician, traveling um, around the world all the time and not having a, uh, you know, a home base, um, so to speak. I think it's um, it's a tough job, you know, always being on planes. It's The travel's difficult on the, bo- the body and, um, and keeping up with all the repertoire. It's a, you know, it's a, um, it's a unique life. It's a special life. But it's also a uh, a challenging one in, in many ways. I know there are a great number of people in our orchestra, in the New South Wales Youth Orchestra, who want to make music their career. Do you have any advice for them in <laughs> making their way in a, what is a very tough world? Um, I think to play as much repertoire as possible. I think, you know, you make those synapses very quickly only once in your life. I think as you get on, it, things, um, you know, things happen in a very different way. You learn in a very different way. But certainly um, a lot of um, the very facile and gifted musicians uh, you see in the industry, you know, they've um, made the necessary leaps and bounds quite early on. And I think... Um, you know, it's just putting your all in everything that you do. It doesn't have to be music, for instance. I think um, there's this idea that um, if it's just something for fun, you don't, you sort of, you treat it like it's for fun. But I think what's really nice is if you do something for fun, whether it's 
painting or running or athletics, you know, if you really, really put a thousand percent into it, um, you, you learn more about yourself, you get more out of it, I think, for life. You started piano at eight. Tell us about some of your early experiences playing the instrument. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was a little bit of a late start, I think, um, in terms of a lot of pianists you hear, two-year-olds, you know, <laughs> who but play. It, but it, did, it didn't stop you progressing extraordinarily quickly. Right. I mean, I, I remembered I was doing, you know, um, something like fifth grade, sixth grade exam, and then I just sort of thought, hey, I want to do, I don't want to do my AMOS. And then so, you know, I did that in six months. And then another six months later, I did my LMOS. And it was just one of those things where you, um, when you like something and you commit your mind to it, you just, um, you kind of just, you swim in it. You just really immerse yourself. You ended up uh, going on to study in a number of extraordinary music schools, and you eventually did a doctorate in music at, at Yale. Right. Um, tell us about some of your studies there. Um, I wrote my dissertation on the intersection between uh, the visual arts and music. The, uh, I'm crazy about the visual arts, and I always felt that music, um, for lack of a better word, is... Um, is interdisciplinary. I don't think, um, and that's another, you know, catchphrase you hear a lot these days. I think everyone wants to say that their music is, is, um, all encompassing and, and more than it is. And I think music is wonderful on its own, but I think to forget that it has all of these lines that sort of go, uh, in other area, cultural areas and sort of other areas in life is to forget that, you know, the people who penned, uh, this music, um, there were people trying to pen something, socially or, or historically or something of their own emotion. So I, I always felt that was, was something very special for me. How, how do you think your studies in that area have impacted on your performance approach? Um, I, I've always been a very visual person. So when I, when I play, I, I have very strong images in my mind. Um, I feel um, very drawn to color in the music. Um, not not only sort of tamba in that sense of the word color, but also uh, visually. You know, I think certain parts are, are light and dark. You have uh, great chiaroscuro in in music like Bach. You have really these moments of fleet light. You know, f delicate finger work, and you have also sort of very grave um, and and dark and somber moments in in different keys and in different dance forms and so on. So. You know, I think it's it's useful to draw from from whatever sensorial experiences you have in the music. Certainly, tell us a bit about your collaboration with the New South Wales Youth Orchestra. How have you been finding it so far? Um, it's been fun. You know, I I I think it's kind of nice to to come back full circle. Um, I guess the New South Wales Youth Orchestra is um a, a sort of incorporation of a couple of other orchestras. Am, am I correct? Um, well, some might might regard it as a. a, a a successor, perhaps in a spiritual sense, okay, to right. the um, the SBS Radio and Television Youth Orchestra, in that a lot of our players were members of the orchestra I when see. it closed, and and that's kind of um, where it sort of um, comes very close to home for me. It was a, an orchestra that I grew up in, playing violin with my brother, um, with Matthew Krell, who was the wonderful conductor then uh, then at that time, and you know all those fond memories. Um, it's kind of nice to come back and and play as soloist with. Um, with, with these musicians, I think it's um, it's it's wonderful to see so many talented people come together and try to 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 make just incredible music because they love it. So it's it's a huge pleasure for me. You've chosen to play Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto with the New South Wales Youth Orchestra. What is it about that piece that appealed to you? Um, you know the Tchaikovsky I've played um, for most of my life. It's it's one of those pieces which I think is just um, a lot of fun for the, the, the players and a lot of fun for the audience. And um, when I suggested that to Thomas, uh, the conductor, he, he said it was a wonderful idea. You know, I, th I think I suggested a couple of other pieces, but I think that was the one which seemed to, to have the allure that we were looking for. Well, you can hear David Fung playing Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto with the New South Wales Youth Orchestra in our inaugural concert. That's at 7pm on Saturday, the 28th of November, in the Verbruggen Hall. David, thanks very much for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me.